Okay, you build the basics. I'll design the bling. <coughs> you know, cool stuff so bees will show up quicker. <coughs> George needed five different parts. A lid, a shallow box, some frames, a grid, and a deeper box. Trouble was, Betsy would be home from dance class in two hours. He didn't have time to make boxes from scratch. Oops, broke my lead. Hey, George, do you have a pencil sharpener? <laughs> and then George realized he didn't need to build boxes. The apartment was full of them. They were called drawers. Now to put everything together. Hmm, too bad you don't have a bunch of drawers that fit together. Maybe I should make a model of the beehive. Do you have any scissors? He did have drawers that fit together. And they came with their own lid. Kitchen cabinets were practically a one-stop shopping spot for beehive parts. Good work, George. What do we use for frames? That was a good question. George had a good answer. They didn't call them frames for nothing. George was just missing one part. But not for long. Now let's put in my improvements. Indoor swimming pool, bowling alley, game room, moon bounce, golf course, movie theater. Huh? <laughs> oh no, you're right, it's late. Let's drop this at Aunt Margaret's. Then we better work extra hard to drum up bees. <laughs> okay, George. So, uh... How do we drum up bees? Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Betsy said bees go from flower to flower. Maybe if their hive had flowers, the bees would move in. Come on, bees. Betsy will be here any mi- ah! Betsy, you're- <laughs> Is this what I think it is? Wait, Betsy, I can explain. See, you said have a taste, so we... <laughs> uh, just the tiniest slice. And it was yum, and then... Where'd it go? Ah. So we tried to buy you more, but everyone was out, so we built you a hive instead. You guys, you've done a lot of things, but this, this is absolutely, by far, the best present you've ever given me! It is? Uh -huh. But we ate your honeycomb. Yeah. What? Oh no! That piece of honeycomb was for you! I've got lots more. What? Uh -huh. Oh, show me how this works. I want to use it in my Earth Day presentation. Sure! Betsy had a hive. Steve and George had more honeycomb. Everyone was happy. Well, almost everyone. A bunch of dugongs were sighted off the coast. Dugongs are Australian sea cows. Come on, let's go, George. Cows that swam in the sea? That did sound cool. But a giant clown rabbit sounded even cooler. 
You want to stay here? Are you sure? Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, wait. Better leave my hat here, since you won't be around to get it back for me. <laughs> Bye, George. Be a good little monkey. <laughs> now to find that giant rabbit. <gasps> there were those footprints again. Only now, the giant clown rabbit had a tiny friend. It looked like they'd stopped here for a drink of water, but then... The smaller footprints disappeared. Could it be? When clown rabbits drank water, they could fly? The little one had landed again. weren't made by a hopping clown rabbit. They were made by a, a, whatever this little guy was. They had hopped around so much, they were back at camp. Hopping sure made a monkey thirsty. <laughs> Maybe his friend was thirsty, too. If only he had a bowl to feed him with. It'll dry out and be as good as new. <laughs> George's new friend looked cute in the man's hat, but he couldn't keep it. the bigger whatever it was. Ow. His small friend couldn't fly. He'd just been getting a ride. George had to get that hat. But his new friends were too fast. Hmm. They were pretty still when they were drinking. But that watering hole was too far away. By the time George got there, the animals might be gone. If only he had his own watering hole. <gasps> and then George realized he did. He just needed some place to put it. Of water to put into it. He hoped his friends were thirsty. George was happy to have the man's hat back, but he was sad his new friends ran off. George, you won't believe it. Sea cows are amazing. You want to see? <laughs> sea cow? That didn't look anything like a cow. George, what happened to the rain cover on the tent? <laughs> no worries, mate. Yeah, long day. I could use a nice bath. <laughs> oh, this day just keeps getting better. Turn around and I'll show you my favorite Australian animal. <laughs> His friends were back. <laughs> also, otters could hold their breath for a long, 
long, long time. Okay, swimming was out. But George had a lot of other tricks up his furry sleeve. Otters might be fast in the water, but monkeys were fast on land. George just had to get the otter out of the water. But how? What did otters like? They like to play. They like to swim. They liked keys. But why did they like keys? It's not like otters could drive a boat. Maybe they just liked keys because they were shiny. George had the beginnings of a brilliant monkey plan. If otters liked shiny things, then maybe he'd follow the fish to land and George could get his key. He did like shiny things. This was working better than George had hoped. But the otter was pretty fast on land, too. And now he had George's fish fob. Not only were otters fast in water and on land, but they had really great hiding places. And then George remembered. He must live around here. They usually have homes called dens along the shore. Maybe that was the otter's home. <laughs> oh no, the otter was underground and George was out of shiny things to lure him out. His only chance of getting that key was to find something else the otter might want. Then he remembered. Otters like to play. They played peekaboo, hide and seek, keep away and chase. Maybe otters would play trade ya. The trick to trade ya was to make your toy look a gajillion trillion times more fun than anyone else's toy. And George was an expert at that. It was by far the most amazing toy the otter had ever seen. The otter hated to give up his shiny key, but the ball was more fun. Oh, wait till you see the pictures I took. I got a rose-breasted grosbeak, a pie-billed grebe, and a coot. You ready to go home? Ah, Mr. Quint's key. You kept it safe, George. <laughs> the otter loved both his new toys. And he didn't miss the key at all. Especially since his dad had four just like it. Good thing George got some leaves from the tree. But Hundley Jr. didn't like the tree leaves. He only liked the leaves from the flowers. Hundley understood. He only liked one kind of dog food. He and Hundley Jr. were exactly alike. 
And then something strange happened. Hundley Jr. dangled down off a stick and stopped moving. Maybe Hundley Jr. needed more food. Hundley had to get more leaves from the flowers fast. When Hundley got to the lobby, he couldn't believe his eyes. Nothing was wrong. George couldn't believe his eyes either. Hundley was dirty and smelled like trash. <laughs> Hundley needed that food, but George didn't want a dirty dog in his clean lobby. It was Hundley versus Monkey Hundley. Who would win? Oh, my flowers. Ms. Klopotsnik, that's who. Aren't they? Oh dear, there's milkweed in this bouquet. I'm allergic to milkweed. Well, at least the lobby smelled better now. When Hundley got back, Hundley Jr. was in a tiny sleeping bag. Where did he get that? Hundley would just wait until his friend woke up. He was sure it wouldn't be long. Ah! Oh! Okay, there's trash all over the floor, George is in the lobby, and you're watching a stick? I'm taking your temperature, Hundley. Days and days went by. But Hundley Jr. stayed wrapped up in the hard little bag. Hundley tried to get Hundley Jr. to come out and play. Hmm? Nope. Hundley tried to get Hundley Jr. to come out and sing. Nope. Meanwhile, George kept watching the lobby in the mornings while the doorman was at his class. He did a good job. Most of the time. Two weeks later, the doorman was back to work in the morning. Bye, George. But Hundley Jr. was still sleeping. George knew how to wake him up. <laughs> it looked like their friend would sleep forever. But then the sleeping bag opened. And out came a butterfly. Where did Huntley Jr. go? It was empty. But that must mean the butterfly was Hundley Jr. No wonder he'd been so sleepy. It took a lot of work to grow wings. Their little friend had grown up. Puppies turned into dogs, baby monkeys turned into bigger monkeys, and caterpillars turned into butterflies. Hundley was happy his friend was awake. He was a little sad, too, because Hundley Jr. didn't want to live inside anymore. It was a beautiful day. A perfect day for flying. They'd miss their friend, but he was ready to leave and go see the world. Thanks to them. Hundley was proud. He'd been a great caterpillar daddy. Hey, lobby monkey. But he'd also learned his job could be done by a monkey. Ah! <laughs> Huntley still did it better, though. <laughs> Hi, we're looking for our dog. Uh, hang on just one second, please. <clears throat> nope. Still a monkey. And a fireman. Together. How can I help you? My dog is here. You, you just brought him in. Ah, come on back. Oh, hey, Pookie Woo 
Pookie, I was worried about you. Yes, I was. Aw, he's very playful. He made a lot of friends already. Even the gerbil likes him. Animal shelters have gerbils? Oh, we take them all. From A to Z, armadillos to zebras. I never had a zebra, actually, but we'd take it. I have got to stop Blaze from running away. Can you help me? You should use a leash and a collar. And you need a dog tag with the dog and owner's name, address, and phone number on it. You can make one at the pet supply store right down the road. Mm. Thanks. There you go, buddy. A brand new dog tag. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Looks like Blaze found the toy section. If Blaze keeps running away, we're gonna need a new fire dog. Or a new probie to watch the fire dog a little better. Don't worry, we got Blaze a dog tag and a leash, and I'll train him to stay. He'll never get out again, I promise. Sounds good, Sam. But right now, it's time for your training. You've got a big test tomorrow. Great, let's go. It had been a long day of dog chasing, but now George could finally relax. Was that Blaze? Nah, couldn't be. Blaze! Ah! George couldn't believe it. Blaze was more trouble than a monkey. Ah! He's too fast, and we're too tired. <gasps> I see you got a nice new dog tag for Blaze. And he tested it out by getting lost again right away. He found a hole in the fence this time. He's super sneaky and super cute. <laughs> oh, you want to go see your friend? <laughs> Blaze came to play with the other dog, and he wanted to play with Charky in the park and play ball with George. <laughs> George suddenly knew why Blaze kept leaving. George figured out how to stop Blaze from running away by getting another dog. Meet Sparky. Great, now we can lose two dogs. The shelter worker says some dogs do better with a friend. Now, let's go take that firefighter test. I'm ready, and the dogs will both be here when we're done. Right, George? <laughs> You did it! You finished the obstacle course in less than two minutes! Oh, yeah! Oh, 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 hang on. You still have to pass the real test. That's right. We have to check and see if the dogs are still here. <gasps> oh, no! Blaze and Sparky are gone! Oh, no. <laughs> they could be miles away by now. I'm sorry, guys. It was sure nice working with you. <sighs> what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Congratulations, Proby Sam. And now you're Firefighter Sam. All right! Can't breathe. I'm good. <laughs> Sorry we didn't find your Petey. Let's ask the guys outside. They go everywhere. Where had all the confetti gone? Hey, guys. My friend here lost a parrot, Petey. Anybody found one? Not yet, but it's a big park. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Want to come along? How did everything from that big bag fit into that little barrel? Nice, huh? The trash cans are fake. They cover these underground tubes. 
They're like big vacuum cleaners. The trash gets sucked down to a central collection area. That way, trash collectors don't disturb our guests during the day. Ready to roll? <laughs> I hope you find your Petey. <laughs> but Petey wasn't to be found. At least not on the streets. Hmm. It was time for George to search the rides. First up, the roller coaster. George hadn't remembered the coaster being that noisy before. Well, hi, little fella. What are you doing here? <laughs> you lost your parrot, Petey? <laughs> That's tough. <sighs> Sue's oiling the far wheels on this coaster. can search the cars for your PD together. A map of all the places you went today? Huh? Hmm. All those rides need maintenance, too. What do you say we help each other out? <laughs> I forgot the most important part. Huh. To take a test ride. Think you're up for it? <laughs> <laughs> to be tightened. Ah! Light bulbs to be changed. Ah! And cables to be replaced. <laughs> Whoa! But there was only one more ride to go, and George still hadn't found Petey. Swamp boats it is. George had worked on all the rides and not found Petey. <gasps> Whenever I lose something, it's usually in the last place I look. Ready, George? And Petey? Has anyone seen my monkey? Shh. Now all he had to do was count the sheep. One, two, three, four, five. But where was number six? There were seven, eight, and nine. Sheep six had to be there, too. George accidentally left the gate open. Sheep six escaped. <gasps> Maybe sheep six was in the barn. Nope, 
not in the barn either. Well, looky here. I guess Mrs. Rankins must have numbered y'all to keep you organized. Ah! 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 Huh? But we only have eight sheep. Why are you wearing a nine? Oh, I see. The nine is just a six turned upside down. Eh, well, I can fix that. Ah! <laughs> there. <laughs> That's more like it. Sheep Six came back. <gasps> but how did he get in? Number six was back, but now number nine was gone. Hi, George. What are you doing? And why are the sheep wearing our calendar? Oh, I get it. You're counting sheep. George, when I said, if you can't sleep, count sheep, did you think I meant real sheep? Uh-huh. I see. Well, Grandma just meant to count sheep in your imagination, not go to an actual sheep pen. Uh -huh. George thought Grandma's way sounded a lot easier. I'm going to finish my bike ride. I'll see you after your nap. But George couldn't take a nap yet. He still had to find sheep number nine. George went to get the number six when it turned into a nine. Then it turned into a six again. How was the number doing that? A six was an upside-down nine, and a nine was just an upside-down six. Sheep number six and sheep number nine were the same animal. The missing sheep had been there all along. George's way of counting sheep was harder than Grandma's, but it sure tired him out. <laughs> that night, everyone came to George's house to celebrate the new year. Ready for the countdown? in the woods. We can bring one. <sighs> now how are we going to deal with that thorn bush? Hmm. Hard pack trail makes it easy. Just you wait. It gets a lot harder, believe me. These are the thorn bushes I told you about. Okay, 
if you really think it'll work. Ah! Ugh. Ugh. Hey, what do you know it worked? George? <laughs> okay. Um well, here here goes nothing. Crossing. Crossing. Ha! I made it! <laughs> All right! <laughs> Too sticky for our wheels. <laughs> Guess you were right after all, Bill. It sure was nice up till now, though. Wait, you're not... You can't turn back. We're almost there. But we don't have a way to get across. Figure out how to get more boards. <laughs> Good thinking. Nice going, George. <laughs> Great <laughs> job. We did it. I told you we could do it. Come on. who's ever gotten his cast signed by a dog, a city kid, <laughs> and a frog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what the best part of the super secret middle of the woods pond is? Getting to share it with friends. Look at this. Boat race, bucket toss, water slide. You've got everything you need. Yeah. <laughs> the dunk booth? <laughs> Actually, I think I can help you there. Got it after the fair closed down. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Mind if we borrow it? Well, only if you invite me to your fair. <laughs> uh -huh. Wow! That's the most wonderful dunk booth I've never ever seen. I think 
I know where your problem lies, George. Yep. Thought so. It's your hinge, all right. Rusted stiff. Hmm. Hmm? Hinges are very important. They're what let things open and close. Like the ones on this door. <laughs> Hinges even help you get around. <laughs> like your knees and your elbows, even your fingers. All hinge joints. <laughs> But fingers won't help with a dunk booth. We need a real hinge. Hmm. Lucky you found a hinge. <laughs> Guess what I brought? Uh, <gasps> it's a dunk booth? I'm going in! This is it. Okay, George, have at it. <laughs> Don't worry, try again. You can do it! Dunk him! Dunk Hit him! Hit the target, George! Oh, George! Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow! The pigs! Affair. You don't mind if we pitch in with a little music? Oh. Um, George, you guys remember me? <laughs> Watch and learn, Mrs. Rankins, because if you got it, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just warming up. Concentrate now, George. Eye on the target. Come on, George. You can do it. event is Midnight Alarm. It's a humdinger. Whoever wins, wins the muster. This game tests each team's response to a surprise nighttime emergency. When the alarm sounds, each team must put on their gear, attach their hose to their truck, and run it all the way to the other side of that hill and shoot it off. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. we're gonna yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. got this one. Okay. Night, night, everyone. <laughs> get up, get up! There's an emergency! All right, don't do this. Yeah. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> Oh! 
George. Congratulations, Stig. Hang tight, boy. We're gonna need a long ladder. It's too short. We should get our ladder truck from the city. Oh, that'll take hours. George knew Blaze couldn't wait for hours. Okay, it's set up. Come on, Blaze. So, the winner of this year's Fireman's Muster is... The Town Volunteers! What? Oh, oh, you get extra points for a real rescue. It's in the rules. Here you go! <gasps> a muster tests who's best prepared for an emergency. And today, that was you. We only brought a truck and a ladder. You brought the monkey. Well, Neptune's Knickers. <laughs> well, thank y'all. And thank you, George. Very clever, George. <laughs> Before they knew it, it was time for the phone call with the scientists. Uh, I hope this works. I inhale, and the suction holds the page as I turn it. You ready? Okay, so that's good. Now I can read Professor Wiseman's notes and won't get nervous talking to the scientists about her invention. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, okay. Ooh, that's them! All right, just stay calm. Everything's okay. Hello? Hello, this is Dr. Hasline and the science board. Professor Wiseman said you'd answer our questions about her new Dexacta invention. Y yes doctor Fine. That's strange. The video monitor isn't working. Video monitor? Yes, surely Dr. Wiseman told you we requested a video conference. Ah, she 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 must have forgotten to mention it. Well, if you can't manage then we'll have to cancel.
Cancel? No, 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 no. I, I, I can use my computer in the bedroom. Please hold. Help me, George. We gotta move all this to the bedroom now. Oh. Why did I think I wouldn't be nervous talking to geniuses who aren't monkeys? Hi, uh, Professor Wiseman's Dixacta is excellent, easy to use, accurate. So, any questions? We only have one question. Uh, would you demonstrate the mechanism? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> B b b I, I, I thought I was just supposed to talk. I, I can't demonstrate it because, see, it's... It, it's complicated. You said it was easy. If it's complicated, we will not approve it. Oh, no, 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 that's not what's complicated. It, it's a long story. No time for long stories. We're very busy geniuses around here. Uh, uh, please stand by. Is that a monkey doodle? Don't want to let Professor Wiseman down. Ready, George? <laughs> <laughs> Doctors, the Wiseman dig Zacta. <gasps> you sound impressed. Why, yes. Are your hands really that hairy? I, I guess I forgot to shave this morning. Anyway, look how easy. You squeeze the lever to open the pail. You dig some dirt, release the lever to close, and the measurements are clearly marked. <gasps> <sighs> did I did I say something wrong? You have three hands. Three extremely hairy hands. Oh, I, I shouldn't have tried this. This is George. <laughs> That's a monkey using the Dexacta. I can't use my hands. Sorry. Don't be. If a monkey can use it, then most scientists can. We unanimously approve the Wiseman Dexacta for use by scientists everywhere. And we love monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> To celebrate their big success, the man with the yellow hat made a meal without any help. <laughs> We're going to be having a lot of salad for the next few weeks, George. <laughs> Garden soil. Excellent choice. Coffee grounds will make the soil rich and airy. That's right, George. Add water and stir. <laughs> and some air holes for breathing. Now, just add worms. at Lake Wanna Sink Lake, bring your racer. Bet you can't beat Mr. Wiggly. <laughs> Worm fever had spread throughout the countryside. George had raced every worm in the valley. Only Mrs. Quinn stood between him and being champ.
Mr. Wiggly is the best digger in my garden. Wow! He sure is a big one! <coughs> That's because I feed my worms veggies, and in return, they make my soil better, and that makes better veggies in my garden. Since all you cheer and worm races scare the fish at the lake, I'm going fishing in the river. Don't forget your lunch, dear. Yeah. Come on, guys! It's time for the championship race! Worm race! Worm race! Worm race! Worm race! We're ready when you are, George. <laughs> <gasps> oh, no! Mr. Quinn took your worms instead of his lunch! <laughs> I'm starved. I wonder what the missus packed for me this time. Worms. Well, the missus packed me some prime bait. Now that there is love. <laughs> there was no time to lose. George? Come here. That's a good monkey. Well, hey, is that my lunchbox? <laughs> oh, then this must be your worm farm. <laughs> good timing, I must say. <laughs> With the championship won, George felt his worms deserved to retire to the garden and help the roses grow. <laughs> Worm racing isn't the only sport in town. You'll find a new hobby. <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> 